I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. I acted like a child. I was treated like a child. As a matter of fact, it was cute and adorable when I was a child, acting like a child. But you know, when I grew to be a man, I put away childish things. Or at least some of us have put away childish things. Now, I don't know about you, but I see lots of childish behavior by men who are supposed to be men and not children. Oftentimes, I see that personified when it comes to sports or sometimes even in political arenas. I see people doing things that are dummying down of what God is trying to do in growing up men of God. The question you have to ask yourself is, what actions you are doing, do they reflect Jesus? Or are they reflecting some behavior or attitude that you have, that you want to make yourself like the world and its ways, as opposed to growing up into him in all things, which is what God said. Because our lives are meant to be a reflection and a refraction of God's grace from his glory reflected off of us to the world. We are meant to be the light of the world, not the reflection of the world back to God. Some people think that because they got saved as some kind of rocker, that they have to stay a rocker and that they're going to stay long hair until they get old and gray. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, I've seen some of these old rockers from my day when they show up like in casinos or they show up on concert tours and they, they go out to do their thing. No offense to them, but uh, they look old. And sometimes they sound old. And sometimes they really don't really you know, look like the way I prefer to remember them. As a matter of fact, often I see them trying to relive the old things over again. They're not doing anything new. They're just reliving their glory days. You know, the glory days that even Springsteen sang about. How once we were, you know, the top of the heap. You know, the creme de la crop. You know, the, the machos. But why would you want to relive your old days? It's kind of like trying to say, hey, I got saved 30 years ago and I haven't changed since. I'm still the same person today that I was 30 years ago. Now, in my mind, that looks to me like a baby sucking its thumb staying in the crib when it's fully grown. Now, I may like babies when they suck their thumbs and they stay in their cribs and they look like babies. But when their body is full grown, I don't think, you know, being in diapers and sucking their thumb is such a pleasant or beautiful experience. I think it's kind of like, what a waste, what a shame. So, we as Christians sometimes have to get a hold of ourselves and say, hey, you know what? Maybe a man cave is not such a good thing. Maybe a man cave is just my way of getting away with being selfish, self-centered, and and holistic, meaning that I'm about me. It's all about me and mine and having fun and doing my way and playing my games the way I want to and hiding my sins in my man cave and acting like children. Then growing up into a man of God and having an office where I could bring people in and discuss the things of the world, pray, to possibly even have Bible studies, to reach out to other people, to be a missionary in the world that God has sent me to save. You see, God didn't send you into the world to build a man cave. Quite frankly, he could have left you to crawl under the rock that you came from. But instead, he decided to save you, oh little cockroach that you are. And he made you into becoming, slowly but surely, growing out of what you were, some little baby running around sucking his thumb, to become likened unto Jesus. Because that's what the word Christian means become Christ-like. And Jesus denied himself of his godliness in order to come into the world to save you. He gave up being God to come into the world to become the fashioned as a man, the son of man, 
and to die for you. Now, you can go off and you know say that you've got grace. Oh well, I've got grace. Don't don't condemn me, brother. Oh, I've got you know my righteousness intact. You know, don't condemn me, brother. I've got my you know my my Christian life you know all set and ready to go. You know, but don't condemn me, brother. I don't. I just ask you, what will you do when you stand before Jesus to give an accounting for your life? What have you done with it? Did you waste it as a child? Did you become a baby rather than grow up into Him in all things? Did you mature and become what God intended you to be? You see, your job is not what God intended you to be. Your job is just something that's passing away with the world. What God intended you to be is the Son of God. And the question you have to ask yourself, are you? Are you growing daily in some way, even if it's a small way, to become more like Jesus today than you ever have in the past? Because if you are not growing from what you were into what He wants you to become, then I question your salvation. I question whether you were saved in the first place because Paul did. Paul said, look, if you're not growing, you're going with the world. If you're not for me, Jesus said, you're against me. And Jesus brought his disciples to the place of actually growing up into him in all things. To become like him and even to the point of his death. Peter said, I don't even want to be treated like Jesus. So crucify me upside down. And so they did. And he died. The reality of our Christian walk is meant to be changing us from glory to glory into the image of the incorruptible God. If you're still stuck in pray, you know, pretending like you know it's some God-given ministry to be like you know some weirdo, you know, for the next 20 or 30 years, thinking that that's what you're supposed to be, I suggest you clean up your act, because while evangelism is good for a certain amount of time and being some kind of like you know freak of nature at times, you know, to say, oh, well, look where I came from, so that way I can minister to the people that are there. You need to grow out of it eventually because there's other people that will take your place. Because if you're not making disciples in that culture that you say you're being sent to, you need to recognize that, guess what? God wants you to grow up, not just be, oh, well, I'm just going to keep witnessing to my rockers, you know, until I'm old and gray-haired and I can't carry a tune, and then I just look like some has-been, washed up and cast aside because I'm still talking about the same old things, doing the same old way, looking the same old way that I've always looked. I'm sorry. The only one that remains the same is Jesus, yesterday, today, and forever, because he was perfection. We are being made into his perfection, not to look at ourselves and say, hey, look how weirdo I was when I was back at being saved. I got saved in the drug culture, so I'm going to stay looking like the drug culture. I don't think so. You know, maybe there's a season where once you get mature, you know, you minister in that season of, like, whatever it may be, and we in the Jesus movement, we you know kept our long hair, we were hippies, you know, we did our thing. But no offense, some of the guys that I see now that are still kind of like doing it the same way, looking the same way, you know, long hair, kind of like, you know, even though they wash it more now and they you know beautify themselves, you know, they just look like an old long haired man, you know, some like old fogey that's over the hill trying to relive the glory days. Frankly, let's get to the place of rejoicing in what God has brought us up to and made us into, which is like Jesus. Because if we think that what we were is best, then we haven't passed the test of are you a man of God or are you just a baby in disguise? Because man caves, Harleys, you know, all the little toys and boys and games that men play in order to get away with what they want to do, you know, like painting up their face in order to act like kids at a football game, in order to demonstrate that they're worse than their children because they go to catch the ball and they dump their child on the floor to catch a left field fly ball. Somehow I don't think that's being a man of God. And somehow I don't think that painting your face and acting like an idiot when it's obvious you're an idiot in a football game is doing anything but being an idiot. Or when you fight at your child's sports game and you come out of the bleachers to do what? Are you a witness of what God has done in your life? Or are you a testimony of how stupid you really are? How childish you actually are? Are you a man or are you really just a baby in disguise? You see, 
when I was a child, I acted like a child. And I was just like you. I acted like a child. I did those things. But I sat down one day and looked in the mirror and said, you know, I'm bigger than this. I'm smarter than this. And I'm more like Jesus than a lot of my people around me. You know, I, I care. I want to show forth the praises of the Lord my God and I want to be an example of a believer to those that care enough to reach out and want God living really in their midst. They, they want God to be as real as I have known Him. And oh sure, there are times that I've failed and acted childish and sometimes I do silly things. But overall, the majority of the time that you see me, I'm very sober-minded knowing that we live in this last generation is last days that we have remaining in order to share Jesus to people that really want to see are you real or are you just like the rest of the world phony you know kind of like entertainers on stage because that's what the world looks at Christianity as a bunch of entertainment you know you go to your Sunday morning and get entertained you know we, we got you we do ours on Friday night you do yours on Sunday morning there's no difference, you know. We see you coming out, you know, you're all happy, you know, campers, you know. But then Monday morning, we see what it's really like. Just like our Friday nights, you know, you know what we're like on Saturday morning. Yeah, we're hungover. So too are Christians lots of times after Sunday. The point being is, are you growing up or are you growing down? Are you being a man or are you being a child? Man caves, hey. Fleshy Christians, hey. You know, grow up, please. For the sake of the rest of the world and most of us who are looking at you, wanting you to be the man of God we expect you to be, look, if you're 50 and you're still playing games, you're playing games. That's the bottom line. If you're 40 or 30 and playing games, hey, it's time to grow up. Get a life. Get real. Eternality is coming. That means that there's an eternal life of something going to exist beyond this world that you see. And Jesus already warned you about that. He said, get ready, be prepared, for the Son of Man will come at an hour that you expect not, and you could die at any moment. And would you like to die looking as stupid as some of these people do at a football game? Or would you like to be as dumb as some of these people fighting about the score, or a rest call, or going to the sports bar, you know, in order to look like some ways of the world when Jesus returns? My question to you is, what kind of Christian are you? A baby or a man? Grow up into him in all things. Ephesians 4.15 Many Christians remain stunted and dwarfed in spiritual things so as to present the same appearance year after year after year after year. There's no upspringing of advanced and refined feeling that is manifest in them. No peace in their life. No joy in their heart. Oh, at times they look like they're having fun. But it doesn't stay or remain as fruit for very long. They exist but do not grow up into him in all things. But should we rest content with being in the green blade when we might have advanced to the ear? and eventually ripen into the full corn in the ear. For those that don't know, corn grows with a blade coming out, a green blade that goes real up and long, and my corn didn't grow this year, but you know, can it tried. Then after the blade comes the ear, and then after the ear, the corn. Should we be satisfied to believe in Jesus and to say, I'm safe, you know, I, I, I got saved without wishing to know in our own experience more the fullness which is to be found in Him to become mature adults in our faith? It should not be so. We should, as good traders in heaven's market, covet to be enriched in the knowledge of Jesus, to be mindful of heavenly things, not so consumed by worldly things. It is all very well to keep other men's vineyards, but we must not neglect our own spiritual growth and ripening. Why should it be always wintertime in our hearts and we act so dour and dismal and whining and complaining that we're no longer a Christian nation or we don't have our Christian way with the world? We don't have our Christian people the way we want them to be. 
We must have our seed time, it is true, but oh for a spring time, yea, a summer season, which shall be given in promise of an early harvest. If we would ripen in grace, we must live near to Jesus. We must live in His presence. We must be ripened by the sunshine of His smiles. We must hold sweet communion with Him and talk to Him and hear from Him. We must leave the distant view of His face and come near as John did and pillow our head on His breast and listen to His heartbeat. Then shall we find ourselves advancing in holiness. Oh, and then we'll know love. Then we'll be experienced in faith. Then we will have in hope all that we require. Yea, in every precious gift we shall not be paupers, but rich in faith. As the sun rises first on mountaintops and gilds them with its light and presents one of the most charming sights to the eye of the traveler, so is one of the most delightful contemplations in the world to mark the glow of the Spirit's light on the head of some saint who has chosen to stand up, to stand tall, and to be a man with God. Who has risen up in spiritual stature? Who is like Saul above his fellows, till like a mighty Alp, snow-capped, he reflects first among the chosen, the beams of the sun of righteousness shining upon his crown, and bears the sheen of his effulgence high aloft for all to see, and seeing it to glorify the Father which is in heaven. Would you be and choose to be that example of the faith that by the hallmarks of those with which have gone before us you would be chosen to be one of those lives that God reflects back to the world and says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased? Or would you rather be the baby in Christ that sucks his thumb and complains and whines and points the fingers at everyone else's life to blame? Everyone else's problems to shame. Everyone else's that you are in fact the one that's sucking your thumb. The reality of growing up means you have to do something about you. And the reality of knowing what to do is between you and God. I can't change your diapers for you. And my mother used to say, I can't read your mind and wipe your butt. And she didn't say it so politely. So the reality of where you are and what you are sometimes is the mess you made of your life because you didn't choose to grow up. It's high time that the sleeper awoke from his sleep, took the bottle out of his mouth, crawled out of the crib and stood up like a man and put his pants on and acted like the man God wants him to be. Would you not choose this day to be a man with God, a man of God, and a man after God's own heart?